The honorary degree will now be conferred. Mr. President, will you present the honorary degree candidate, Michael O'Day? Mr. Chancellor, I am honored to present Mr. Michael Ordain. Like the artists he celebrates, Michael Ordain follows his own path and inspires many along the way. He combines a keen sense of business with an ardent passion for the arts and a civil libertarian's commitment to justice and equality for all. And he puts his beliefs into practice. As a young man, Michael O'Dane learned at the London School of Economics a profound sense of the dangers of the state dominating civil society and the importance of public institutions for the promotion of education, the arts, and human welfare. He learned also of the long history of social protest in confronting government and reforming public policy. On his return to Canada, he engaged actively in the major political developments of his time, traveling to Berkeley, to protest the Vietnam War, joining the Mississippi Civil Rights Marches against racial segregation and being imprisoned for his efforts, and playing an important role in the birth of the BC Civil Liberties Association, whose first meeting was held in his living room. Such commitments inform all areas of his life. In 1980, after a successful career in social planning, he assumed leadership of Polygon Homes Limited, and as its chairman and chief executive officer, he has overseen the construction of more than 10,000 dwellings in the greater Vancouver area. His foresight has transformed the face of many Vancouver neighborhoods and earned him the admiration of his peers. In recognition of his astute judgment, they elected him the chairman of the Business Council of British Columbia in 2002. We too have relied greatly on his knowledge and talent. The participation of Polygon Homes in our university development has ensured the long-term success of this project. And we are fortunate as well that this great friend of education and the arts has also helped advise on the campaign for SFU School for the Contemporary Arts. This latter commitment reflects Michael Ordain's deep commitments to the arts and the pivotal role he has played in the, pre in the, in the promotion of the arts in our community. He is esteemed by the entire arts community, many of whom have said that he is ins indispensable to the arts in our province. A gracious patron and generous philanthropist, he has eloquently argued that the visual arts are vital to the economic well-being of this province, and he has backed his words with action. Over the years, he has supported numerous exhibitions of painting and sculpture, created the Ordain Prize for the Visual Arts, and endowed a curator's position at the Vancouver Art Gallery. For his exemplary contributions, he was honored with the Edward Bovey Award for Leadership Support of the Arts in 2004. Mr. Chancellor, the narrative of Michael Ordain's life is profoundly interwo interwoven with this province. A fifth-generation British Columbian, he has embraced all with his generosity and goodwill. He has demonstrated better than anyone how business interests can be made consistent with ethical and social obligation, making equally important contributions to our economic and social welfare. Only his self-effacing modesty prevents him from much wider public acknowledgement that he deserves. Mr. Chancellor, I now ask on behalf of the Senate of this university that you confer on Michael Ordain the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Michael O'Dain, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Dr. O'Dain will be hooded by Dr. Bill Crane, Associate Vice President, Academics.
It is with pleasure that I now call on Dr. Michael Ordain for his convocation address. Dr. Ordain. Excuse me, um, Mr. Um, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President, and um, members of the Senate. <clears throat> I'd like to um, commence by congratulating the 2005 um, graduating class. Many of you have come from afar and you've undergone considerable sacrifice to um, get your degrees today. Well, well done. Um, in my case, you know, it's, it's really not uh, very fair, is it? I didn't have to pass one exam to get this uh, degree today. So. And nevertheless, I, I do thank the, uh, the Senate, the university, for conferring this honor upon me. Um, when I saw the list of uh, other people um, getting honorary degrees, I sort of wondered what, I, what I'm doing here. But anyway, I'm, I'm here, and I, I'm going to speak personally. I, I, I don't, I've never spoken to a, a group as large as this, so I'm just going to say a few personal words uh, strictly to uh, you men and women who are um, graduating today. Uh, I'm sure you want to get on, cross the stage, get your paper, and go have a party, but just bear with me a few minutes. Um, I'm just going to speak a little bit from my experience. I, I, I can't really give you any good recipes for, for life because my own career has been a series of accidents. I was actually a professional student for many years because I found I could make more money on an after-tax basis from getting fellowships from various funding agencies that didn't talk to each other than getting a regular job. Um, it, it was a good life, and, um, but eventually I, I became bored with it, uh, and I drifted from, from job to draw, job looking for something interesting to do until one day a friend of mine I was having lunch with uh, said that he was starting a residential construction business and would like to know if I would like to um, help him run it. Uh, sure, I replied, when do I start? Tomorrow, he said, and then I realized uh, I'd accepted the offer without uh, working out either how I was going to learn to build homes or inquiring about a paycheck. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, to get in life, uh, it's true, you, you do need to, to work hard, just like you have done to, to get your degrees. I recall the uh, Kemens Wilson, the founder of the Holiday Inn chain, once saying, only work half a day. Uh, it doesn't matter the, which half, the first 12 hours or the second 12 hours. But uh, while hard work, I think, is essential to, um, to get on in life, uh, there's something else I want to speak to you today about, and that's the, the need to occasionally take risks. Take risks in, both in your own personal life and in your career. I suppose when it comes to your personal life, getting deeply involved with someone means taking a risk. Have you ever met people who shy away from close relationships just because they're not sure that the right boy or the perfect girl might come along sometime later? In the business world, Canadians have a reputation for being more risk adverse than many other, people of many other countries, and I'm not sure whether this is true or not. But um, perhaps we should encourage more risk-taking. Uh, for example, Singapore, which arguably has uh, Asia's uh, highest standard of living, in Singapore, the government today is worried about their citizens becoming risk-adverse. So um, if there's one thing I, I can pass along based on um, my years of wandering through life, and that is um, don't be afraid to be a little different from the pack that you run in. Don't be afraid to be a little different from your friends. Most progress in life is pioneered by non-conformists. As Mark Twain said, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. The world needs more people who are prepared to challenge established modes of thinking. And once they have surveyed the lay of the land to move forward, on their own course through the turbulent sea of life. After all, isn't it what 
The man after whom this great university is named, isn't that what he did when on May 28, 1808, Simon Fraser launched a party of 24 voyageurs and First Nations guides on an unknown river, conquering many rapids and treacherous portages, taking all manner of risks until his canoes reached salt water only a short march away from the mountain on which we sit today. It was rather like me trying to cross the Second Narrows Bridge this morning. Yes, um, you will sometimes encounter failure when you take risks. But fear not failure, because it's usually after only many unsuccessful attempts that we eventually succeed. Let's, fa <clears throat> excuse me. Let's face it, our allotted time on this earth is still on average only amounts to a little more than the biblical three score and 10 years. And I have few regrets of how I've lived my life. I seldom look back, but whenever I do, it's related to occasions when I was afraid to take a risk. I was afraid to stand up and challenge a bully of a teacher in my school in Victoria. He was talking racist nonsense in my class. I was afraid to defend a lad who was getting picked on because he looked a bit more effeminate than the rest of us. And I was afraid to ask that gorgeous blonde I met more than 50 years ago on the Paris Metro to go for coffee, and so on. You know, my first time, uh, my first full-time job was working in various positions for Canadian Pacific Airlines in the Western Arctic. CPA at that time was the second largest airline in Canada. In 1958, I resigned with the idea of traveling to Cuba to link up with Fidel Castro, who was waging guerrilla war at the time in the, in the mountains of southern Cuba. I, I, I never actually got to Cuba, but that's another story. However, what I want to share with you is that I recall being plagued in my dreams for some years about the wisdom of leaving a secure job in a rapidly expanding airline company. As it happened, CPA was sold to Pacific Western Airlines, which uh, in turn fell into serious financial difficulty and was eventually taken over by Air Canada. I no longer have those dreams of insecurity. <laughs> Risk taking is essential to obtaining success in any field. Certainly it's wise to do as much research and planning as possible before seizing an opportunity. But when the moment comes along, grab it, because opportunities don't come along every day. As Jackie Robinson, one of the world's greatest athletes, a great ball player, said, life is not a spectator sport. In my own case, eventually, I did end up in the real estate development industry. Now, you sociologists out there will know that real estate developers are not held in very high esteem unless your name happens to be Donald Trump. We occupy almost the lowest position on the surveys of prestigious jobs and professions. In a way, this is strange because mankind has needed the services of builders since the beginning of time. But we've probably earned our low position because we're involved in changing land uses. And we often bother people by changing single family to apartment, by cutting down trees and building new subdivisions. Change is uncomfortable for most human beings. However, I make no apologies for being a home builder. It's one of the most important industries in British Columbia in terms of generating employment. And where would the community be without the homes that we build? But having said that, for me, business has never been an end in itself. Some people, some of you, I'm sure, can't live without a cigarette a glass of wine, or your cell phone. For me, I can share with you today that I can't live without an association with the arts. This is because the artist is a magician. The works that he or she creates are capable of living forever. The music of the great 18th century composers such as Mozart and Beethoven, the plays of Shakespeare, the paintings of Botticelli, the statues of Michelangelo, and yes, the exquisite carvings of the great First Nations artists, Charles Edenshaw, Bill Reed, and Robert Davidson. These will continue to communicate long after all of us assembled today have gone to our happy hunting grounds. 
On the one hand, you're going to have your career, you've got your family priorities, but we can't go through life without from time to time reflecting on some of the questions that have preoccupied mankind since the beginning of time. Where did we come from? What's the purpose of life? Where are we going? How should we relate to one another? These are all subjects that artists as well as great religious leaders have addressed from the beginning of time. Simon Fraser set out that one fine spring day 184 years ago on a heroic voyage on a river hitherto unexplored by Europeans. After great challenges, he came to a tranquil area where the river meets the sea and around which today is, lies a great city. This day, which was promising to be fine a few minutes ago, I want to tell you how much I really admire you graduates who are setting out in your own voyage, carrying the credentials of this great university. May you survive the raging rapids, traverse the perilous portages and paddle on through sparkling waters until you eventually meet arrive at a destination that none of us can visualize today. Merci et bon voyage. Thank you, Dr. Ordain.